the regional municipality of Wood Buffalo here in Fort McMurray uh, to survey firsthand the impact of this uh, spring flooding that has very sadly uh, flooded much of downtown Fort McMurray and uh, jeopardized many other parts of the community. I'm here with uh, regional municipality mayor Don Scott together with Environment and Parks, uh, Alberta Minister Jason Nixon, the Mar Department of Environment is responsible for uh, rivers and, and water flows, waterways, and is monitoring the situation very closely. We also have uh, provincial MLAs Tanny Yao and Leila Goodrich and uh, provincial deputy minister uh, Paul Winnick, who is uh, responsible for the Alberta Emergency Management Agency. Um, we also have uh, uh, Simon Tallow, Kirsten Balsam, and Mike Allen from the regional municipality. And I want to thank all of them for taking the time uh, to meet with us and brief us on the situation as it emerges. Um, this is, I gather, uh, a once in a hundred year flood situation. Fort McMurray has seen, of course, uh, ice packs and uh, and spring floods in the past and, and most recently a significant one 20 years ago. Uh, but this apparently is a once in a century situation. Um, we took a flight over, uh, over the city and saw the impact. It's very significant. Uh, and uh, it, what, of course, this adds to a, a town that's been through so much adversity in recent years, a community that has struggled uh, with the, uh, the, the fire five years ago, with several years of economic adversity, now with the coronavirus pandemic, and now these floods. And so uh, I'm just here on behalf of all Albertans to share uh, our solidarity and our practical support with uh, Wood Buffalo and the people of Fort McMurray. Uh, as they get through this, we will provide all resources that are necessary. Um, the Department of Environment and Parks has already been providing uh, uh, a lot of practical support, including uh, pumps. Uh, we are going to be sourcing sandbags to help uh, defend some of the infrastructure in the community. Um, we, of course, will be providing funding uh, for emergency response, uh, and we'll be talking, once we get past the emergency phase, to the community about uh, rebuilding, as obviously there will be some, some significant and lasting property damage. Um, I want, one thing I want to point out is a, a number, there seems to be a widespread view that um, this problem could be solved. Uh, with simply uh, having the Canadian Air Force come in and bomb the, uh, the ice pack on the river. Uh, but uh, all of the expert advice we are receiving is that would be, in fact, counterproductive. Apparently that did happen back in 1972 in a much uh, smaller uh, flood, smaller ice pack. Um, in this case, we've got something like 25 kilometers of ice that is backed up on the river. Of course, here in Fort McMurray, we have the confluence of five different rivers. And um, the expert advice we're getting both from the water experts at Environment and Parks and, and our emergency management agency is that uh, seeking to, to bomb that duration of that, that uh, length of, of ice pack, uh, 25 kilometers, uh, would not actually dislodge the ice, but would, uh, wouldn't displace it. It would simply probably jam it up even further. Uh, so we will do whatever is necessary based on expert advice uh, to defend the people of Fort McMurray and Wood Buffalo uh, from this flood, but that does not appear to be uh, a viable option. And so I want to commend uh, Mayor Scott and his uh, local emergency management team for their excellent work. Uh, they declared a local state of emergency yesterday. That's on top of the uh, COVID-19 local state of emergency and, of course, the provincial uh, state of emergency. Um, if additional assets are required, for example, from the federal government, uh, we will uh, certainly w work with the municipality to make those requests. Um, the mayor has asked for additional uh, law enforcement support, and we're looking at what we can provide in that respect, uh, as well as additional uh, pump uh, equipment and, uh, and potentially um, uh, kind of uh, rapidly erected uh, dams as well to protect uh, some, some critical infrastructure in the community here. So we are deeply concerned about this. Um, uh, General Winnick, uh, our deputy minister, will be going to, uh, uh, when we return to Edmonton, straight to the Provincial Operations Centre, uh, which uh, provides provincial coordination in response to emergencies such as this uh, to see what additional resources we can send. And with that, I'm going to invite Mayor Scott uh, to say a few words as well, and then we'll hear from uh, Minister Nixon. Mayor. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Premier. So uh, it was a real good opportunity to show the Premier the region today. We took a fly over, over Fort McMurray and the downtown in particular. He saw the devastation, which was uh, basically from one end of town to the other. 
and uh, it was good that the Premier came here. I've been in touch with Minister Nixon since yesterday, and we've been communicating. So the provincial government has been extremely helpful and extremely attentive to what's going on up here. Uh, we have made a number of requests today. Uh, we spoke about the potential of the military being in the region uh, for the future to help us uh, deal with the situation, along with all the items that the Premier discussed, including uh, sandbags, uh, potentially law enforcement personnel. Uh, so we've made a long list of requests that are going to be taken back uh, by Minister Nixon and the Premier back to his provincial cabinet and his colleagues to see if uh, how that can be expedited. Uh, we basically just want to make sure that people are protected and looked after as much as possible and as quickly as possible. The people of this region are as tough as any I've ever seen on earth because they've been through a lot. And if there's any group that can make it through uh, one more challenge, it's the people of our region. And I'm just very grateful that the Premier came up here and spent some time in the region and saw firsthand what is happening here. And I think you'll have a much better idea of what we're asking for now that he's going back to Edmonton to, uh, to advocate for us. So thank you very much uh, for giving me a few minutes. I think we're going to take questions at the uh, end. Uh, Minister Nixon? Up there. So Minister Nixon? Yeah, yeah, thanks, Your Worship. Yeah, as, as the Premier said, we're dealing with a very difficult situation on the river with the 25 kilometers of an ice jam and another 10 kilometers of ice jam further upstream from that jam. Pretty significant. I want to be very, very clear. We will use everything in our power, uh, both either from the provincial government or the federal government, to help clear up that jam. Uh, there is a lot of comments about explosives or using bombing and or explosives for that jam. We've heard them. Our experts, as the Premier said, have made it clear that would actually make it worse. It would compact the ice and make the situation worse. We do not want to do that. We will continue to work with our experts to find every option that we have. Right now, the best thing that we can do is continue to protect infrastructure, protect people's homes, work with the regional municipality uh, to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to help uh, Fort McMurray protect itself and, and the full region protect itself. And we'll watch as it develops here over uh, the next a few days. I want to stress that it's, uh, it's as, as the Premier said, it's very tough to see this. This is a significant uh, situation. Uh, I feel for the region, as does all of our, our government, and we will continue to stand uh, beside the region each and every day until we're able to overcome this uh, in the coming days. And with that, I think we'd be happy to take questions. Actually, I'm going to get one more, Steve. Yeah. I'm going to invite um, uh, Deputy Minister Paul Winnick of uh, Municipal Affairs, who is responsible for the Alberta Emergency Management Agency and who until recently was the Vice Chief of Defence Staff of the Canadian Armed Forces and the Commander of the Army to, to comment on uh, support that uh, uh, we'll be providing through the Provincial Operations Centre as well as his military expertise. I'd like him to comment on the, uh, uh, the suggested use of explosives uh, from the military uh, to deal with the ICE situation. Uh, General Winnick. Thank you, Premier. Uh, as the Premier mentioned, uh, uh, the Mayor has given us a, a number of requests today, uh, sandbags, potential uh, 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 pumps as well, uh, new types of sort of berms or sandbags that are actually filled with water, if you will, uh, to actually slow down things. We're going to take all of these back to the Provincial Operations Centre tonight, uh, coordinate that and make sure that we get what we need up here uh, so that we can uh, fight the, uh, the floods up here as well as we can. With regards to the potential for bombing, I think uh, the Premier and Minister Nixon covered the points. Given the size of this ice jam, that's impractical to start with. And explosive disruption of that level, in some cases, actually compacts things. The only other point I'd like to add is there may have been bombing done in the past. I'm not aware of that. Uh, but from a safety point of view, too, that is uh, pretty risky. And no matter what type of ordinance you have, there is always a dud rate. And that would pose a significant problem if we ever encountered that. So I would certainly not recommend that. Thank you. So happy to take any questions. And we have a number of people here who can uh, field those as well. Okay. Uh, so Premier, I know uh, bombing has obviously been brought out of the question, but what about the use of regular reserve force personnel from Edmonton just to help with sandbagging or evacuation? Well, the mayor has, has raised a request on that, I would say uh, informally, and, and uh, we've asked for a definition of what exactly those uh, assets would be used for. I'd be happy to pass that on to the Government of Canada. The way this works formally is that the, the Provincial Minister of Public Safety makes a request to uh, the Federal Minister of Public Safety that then goes to the Department of National Defense. Um, and, um, and so we are going to assess that to th this afternoon and this evening. Uh, and, you know, um, there, there, there's a possibility that perhaps additional, uh, f f you know, people on the ground here helping to, uh, uh, for example, just provide uh, for security. I, I understand there's a concern with the, that law enforcement agencies are overstressed here. 
So we'll see perhaps beginning with the Alberta Sheriff's Service and we'll also talk to the RCMP uh, to see if they can provide additional boots on the ground. Um, and we'll continue working with the municipalities to see if we can uh, define a potential mandate uh, for Canadian Armed Forces resources to be helpful here. Um, one thing I would point out as a former Minister of Defence, I know that it, it uh, when uh, the military is deployed, it, it, it takes them time to muster. They can't deploy over typically overnight. It takes uh, usually a couple of days. And this is a situation that hopefully will be abating in, uh, later this week. Uh, but but we'll, we'll continue to discuss that with the municipality. And if there is a formal request, we'll certainly uh, be willing to consider putting that through to the Department of National Defence. Okay. We've had a lot of evacuees reach out asking about any financial assistance. I know the municipality is helping cover accommodation and supports right now, but a lot of them are dealing with insurance issues, especially being in some of these areas. Is there a possibility that the province may introduce some financial programs after this is all done? Uh, uh, th there is a possibility for sure. Uh, it's it's too early to say. Uh, we, um, uh, we're going to go back and, and look at whether we need to provide for some uh, emergency payments for people who have had to be evacuated similar to what we did during the fire five years ago and we did for wildfires last summer um, and uh, that's that's definitely a possibility in the short term to provide just for uh, a roof over people's heads um, there is an arrangement that the province has with municipalities where the provincial government picks up a lot of the uh, emergency response payments and then when it comes to actually rebuilding um, we'll, we'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it uh, I mean let's face it we're still rebuilding from the fire in parts of Fort McMurray and uh, the, the province is also coping with unprecedented expenditures on um, on our coronavirus pandemic response uh, but I've already said to, to the mayor that uh, Alberta will be here for the people of Fort McMurray uh, and um, we, we are prepared to do uh, what it takes to help in ensure the future of this community. Fort McMurray has done more than any other community to fuel Alberta's prosperity and frankly Canada's prosperity in recent decades. Uh, both the province and the country owe this town and the people that live in it and work in it. And I just want to say once again how uh, devastating this is to see people who, who lost their homes five years ago, just rebuilt them, and having those homes jeopardized once again. So uh, we will be there in practical terms and in moral terms. And let me just give a shout out to uh, the Red Cross is already stepping up here, I understand, uh, to provide support. If uh, ordinary Albertans and Canadians want to help out directly, even with a symbolic contribution, uh, I'm sure that uh, the Red Cross is set up to take those contributions. But we will be obviously supporting uh, the community, uh, both in the emergency phase and the rebuild phase. Uh, we just don't know how large a requirement that will be. There are tools that could be used for an ice jam uh, at different stages, including possibly explosives, as well as floating excavators, uh, different options like that. The Alberta Environment Department, in uh, cooperation with uh, the municipality, will look at that. Currently, though, the problem is it's so vast uh, at 25 kilometers, there are no safe alternatives for us to be able to reduce that. So as we watch it develop over the next few days, as it shrinks, if it jams up in other areas, uh, we will continue to look at, uh, at options. We will use every option that we can, that we can use safely to be able to help uh, the people of the region and be able to get this ice jam in place. But every alternative that we have right now will actually make the situation worse or is too dangerous. Uh, so we're gonna continue to watch and put most of our focus right now into protecting the community, protecting infrastructure, uh, and standing with the municipality as we watch it develop over the next few days. All right, any other questions? Thanks guys for coming out.